in the future, there will be like a new capability that, that you can just take a show video of your thing, but it can recover, you can see through this uh, refraction and see through this abstractions. Welcome to Creative AI Conversations with me, Leah Coleman. In this interview series, we'll be chatting with prominent machine learning researchers and artists on their perspectives on Creative AI. My name is Jiabing Huang, and uh, I'm a computer scientist. So I develop a computational method, use computer to help us understand and um, recreate images and video data. Uh, so the specific area I, I'm working on is called uh, computational photography, or some, some uh, or and computer vision, and I use a lot of computer vision techniques and machine learning techniques to help us achieve that. Yeah, can you describe like the institutions you're affiliated with? It's Reality Labs and then also a couple universities, right? So basically, I was um, an assistant professor at Virginia Tech, which, which uh, where I'm not right now. Uh, I, I'm currently at Blacksburg, Virginia, um, and so I've been staying. Uh, I've been there for a couple of years as an assistant professor, and then right now I am with Meta uh, as a research scientist. And then next, starting next fall, I will be uh, uh, a, a new faculty at University of Maryland. So I'm moving to Maryland uh, College Park. I guess what is your background? How have you gotten to the place you currently are? Starting my in my bachelor degree, I'm actually very hardware oriented. Uh, so I studied this IC design and studied this. Uh, it's called VRSI at that time. So it's fairly hardware oriented, but I, and I was good at it, but I don't like that, uh, uh, that feel. So I started to kind of uh, trying to find a way to switch. Um, and then I, I come across a talk uh, by uh, a, a professor at Carnegie Mellon. Uh, his name is Takio Kanade. So it's like a legendary people in our field. He showed this kind of like a application of like a, a mounting cameras on, on the football stadium field. And then you can stop the time and view, uh, interpolate different views. Uh, so right now you can see that on all the kind of broadcasting. So how have you used technology and creativity in your work? Like what is your process or techniques? Um, and yeah, if you could share some stories about new and emerging technologies that you're excited about working with or have been like a game changer for you? Uh, so I usually think about like, uh, what can I do with the photographs I already have, like sits in my uh, cell phone. Uh, for example, I have two kids, I take a lot of pictures of them. And how can I kind of, how can I create new visual experience from them? Uh, so, for example, one of the example is the uh, that you can you can add a like a two D. All those photos are still in two D, so you can um, add new dimension, uh, like a like a three dimensional feel of them uh, by creating this. We call this three D photography, uh, so that you can uh, kind of appreciate that that moment a lot more, a lot a lot more immersive. A lot of these kind of advances are building upon some of the latest uh, machine learning approach for, for 3D perception. So I think that's really exciting. Um, like previously, we probably couldn't do this uh, very well, but nowadays we do have a lot of tool on, for example, simple view depth estimation. We have tools for, um, uh, for represent the 3D scene through um, the neural rendering type of uh, uh, technologies. Uh, so all these are very exciting, I think, uh, to kind of to for graphics and computation for photography researchers. Aside from problems where you have this large data set, how do you deal with problems where you don't have a large data set? Uh, one way, if for example, you don't give an image, you don't have the full three D information about that image, but maybe you can take two images of the same scene. And you know, like how these two cameras are related. Uh, what you can do is that okay, I take this first frame of this camera, and I want to 
uh, take this image and want to reconstruct this kind of whatever 3D representation that that so that if you, I render that model onto the second frame, a different camera, it will reconstruct the the uh, the second frame. Uh, but you can capture images from multiple frames, but you don't need to uh, have ac direct access to the ground truth 3D information. Um, another way would be like uh, you take an image and then you carve out something, but 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 because you kept your image, so you also know what's what's there. Uh, so you pretend that you don't know some information, and you, you ask your model to predict those things. Um, that's another way to kind of. It's, it's also similar. It's uh, it basically try to reconstruct the data itself. Uh, I was wondering if you could describe, um, like a paper you worked on or a specific like story or time where where self sufficient or reconstruction came in handy? So one of the paper I, I found that uh, this type of reconstruction loss will be very helpful is a, is a work on, on removing refractions. So the problem is like this. So you, when you take a cell camera, you take your cell phone and you capture a scene. And so, but you can actually take multiple pictures and, and then try to come, uh, basically uh, re recover what's the clean uh, scene and the uh, occluder. You can basically remove the occluder so that you get a, a clean picture. Uh, so there, what you, you want to do is that you want to basically uh, learn to pre create a model like uh, of the scene. That's like, what's the occluder look like? What's the clean scene look like? And so that when they kind of, when they, move at the right location, they will reconstruct the original image. And then you can use this as a super supervision signal to train the model. You can imagine that uh, in the future, there will be like a new capability that, that you can just take a show video of your thing, but you can recover, you can see through this uh, refraction and see through these abstractions. How does this, uh, like, does this all fall under the umbrella of in-painting? Yeah, it's kind of an impending problem, uh, but the difference here is that uh, it's not you don't need to specify where you want to impend. Uh, just imagine that you are taking uh, against a glass, right? So impending problem usually says, that, okay, I want to see, I want to remove these regions and these are pixel I want to remove and want to impend what's what what's uh, what what's the possible regions there. Um, but refraction is very hard, right? Because refraction is kind of global. Right? Everywhere has kind of been affected by the refraction. Um, and there you can, uh, it's it's not possible to just label, oh, these are the refracted pixel, uh, because it's kind of like a semi-transparent thing. So you will have to handle this uh, non-binary uh, impact of the occlusion. We might have talked about this a little bit already, but what do you think are currently the biggest challenges in your research field? So many people say that uh, computer graphics is taking model to and then render images, right? And computer vision is the inverse problem. Like I take images and I try to infer what's going on behind the scene. Well, infer it from image to model. So right now I've seen a lot of examples where computer graphics can be basically model to generate uh, kind of images that are sufficiently realistic that you can train computer vision model without ever seeing any real images. And that's, I think it's very promising because you could potentially get rid of the this labeling uh, kind of process. You don't need a human to, to, to kind of segment the regions or the quality that the computer graphics uh, um, um, like techniques can generate is getting more and more, um, more and more advanced. I think this is also drive by, it's also driven by the advance in GPU computing. Uh, so previously you probably need like, like render a, a, a sufficiently good image. You probably need like a several, several, uh, like it'll take a long time potentially. Um, but uh, right now it could be like fraction of seconds uh, to so that you can scale this up to to lots and lots of data. 
when people try to do say uh, face research, they want to find for example faces. Um, but a lot of that is very biased toward certain population, certain race, certain gender. Uh, it's very hard to generate like a diverse set of data, uh, like non-representative uh, population. But in graphics, you can actually do that, right? You can actually make sure that your data is uh, all kinds of skin colors, all kinds of gender, all kinds of ages, they are well represented. So your algorithm will be less biased toward working very well on, they like, say, certain population, but working very poorly on certain population. So that could also be a, another benefit. That's one of the reasons I think that will be, uh, it's a very exciting direction. And then like, how do you think, or do you think as researchers, there are things you can do to mitigate the, like the misuse of your research? Yes. So for example, a lot of the generative models uh, research, um, they will also have uh, a corresponding active research on that. For example, how do you kind of detect whether an image is, is uh, computer generated, right? So that, that could be one type of um, uh, 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 work on that or kind of when you when you generate a uh, computer generate photographs, maybe you would embed certain information where you can decode that. Oh, this is actually a kind of like certification uh, on the image itself. So you know this is a computer generated photograph. Um, um, yeah. So the, all these kind of there there's certainly things that you could uh, do to mitigate, like basically prevent kind of malicious, malicious uh, use of this, these type of methods. In the future, how do you think generative or synthetic content will impact creative fields like art, design, film, and fashion? I feel that it's not a way to, it's not really trying to replace those, those components. It basically kind of, you can think about those uh, generated um, models and these could be you can think about this as a tool right so tool to fill in missing details uh, like the artist may may only focus on their how things will look like and in, in in the 3d but you can potentially photorealistically generate uh the, those content um so that will kind of you can think about this as it could be a toolbox for for artists or firm and fashion uh to design um, these various things. Uh, for example, you want to design a product, you may design one product and second product, but uh, for example, generating models is capable of taking all, all this information, but create this in smooth interpolation so that you can actually play around, you can actually explore different dimension in the latent space of these generating models, uh, as opposed to kind of like in this sparse um, uh, designs. So, so, I mean, a lot of things could be as, as a way to facilitate um, this kind of creative process. Yeah, like what is next for you? Like what is your dream project or thing you want to work on? Um, so a lot of things that I'm currently working on is the like we have been working on 3D photos. Um, and right now we basically kind of, a lot of my work, previous work, um, Kind of are on like pushing this to three uh to video right so I start work on consistent depth estimation and trying to be able to and and use uh, kind of leverage implicit field methods to to uh, kind of take a video dynamic video and be able to have this kind of viewpoint changes um, um like you can fix the time you can create kind of something like a matrix. Uh, kind of start, yeah, those those kind of um, so created this kind of control, and so all of these are basically trying to see okay, how can I take this kind of user user content like a regular content, typical contents, and be able to kind of uh, basically understand what's the underlying three D representation of this, so that you can um, you can do a lot of things. You can do the rendering of those three contents to create this kind of free viewpoint videos, or you can do uh, analysis. For example, you can understand uh, how things are related to each other spatially. A lot of the recognition problems also 
are mo mostly focusing on 2D problems, like labeling pixels or detecting a bounding box of, of an object. But I think in the future, this will be uh, all moved to 3D understanding. Cool, yeah, it was a pleasure chatting with you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Man, uh, yeah nice to meet you. All right, thank you, take care. All right, thank you, thank you.